Hi friends, please subscribe to my channel for SQL and MSBI up to date technology videos. In this video, so let's talk about how to load Excel file data to the SQL Server by using SSIS. So before going to show me directly in the SSDT, let me show you the data which is there in the Excel file. So this is my Excel file which are of having ID, name, location and gender which are of having three rows of data, four columns and three rows of data. So this is the uh, Excel file which I am planning to load into the SQL Server. If you see the SQL Server, so this is my SQL Server instance with a, a database name of sample under that I have a table name with a name of employee. So this is a table which contains four columns ID, name, location and gender. Now let me create a package so which will help us to load Excel file data to the SQL Server. So in that, so let me add a new package new package and let's give a meaningful name as a developer it is very important for us to give a meaningful name now i'm going to name it as a excel file load okay yeah so this is the package which will help me to load data from excel file to the sql server so in this scenario here i'm going to take data flow task so data flow task is the one which will help us to load the data from any sources to the any destination any sources to the any destination so here data flow task i have let's configure a data flow task how to configure a data flow task is let's double click on the data flow task or right click on the data flow task click on edit so both are the same so this is how we configure any control in the ssis now so you are in the data flow tab now now here you need to specify what is your source and what is your destination now let's go to the ssis toolbox from the ssis toolbox you need to drag and drop the excel source because your plan is to load the data from excel to the sql server let's drag and drop the excel source so here so once you drag and drop the excel source excel source will come with a red cross symbol that means that that is not configured or it is configured with a error now let's double click on the excel source so once you double click on the excel source you will get a window where it will ask you for the connection manager now let's double click on it so once you double click on it if you already have a connection you can directly select it otherwise you need to click on cancel and you need to create a connection manager in the ssis now how to create a new connection manager for to read the data from the excel let's click on new so once you click on a new so it will show you a pop-up again one more pop-up on the top of a pop-up which will ask you for the file path now let's browse it so once you browse it so here in this location you need to select your excel file so now my excel file is emp data so let's select that excel file let's click on ok so once you click on ok so the name of the connection manager by default is excel connection manager and data access mode so here I am planning to read directly a table. Okay. So I by default is that command only. Or if you want to write a command, you can use SQL command or SQL command from variable or table name or view name variable. You can do whatever you want. But for time being, I am going with the same as a table or view. So now let's expand this here. This is the place here you need to select the sheet name. This is the place where you need to select the sheet name. If you see in my Excel contains three sheets. So that is the reason why it is showing three sheets sheet one sheet two sheet three if the sheet name is changed to some employee data or customer data so that time you will be getting employee or customer something like that let's select sheet one and if you want to see you can preview it the data so this is the data which i am planning to load that into sql server let's click on close let's click on ok so now the excel source is configured so it is correctly configured now if you observe very closely so there is no cross mark there is no cross mark it means that the source is correctly configured now let's take a validb destination so here now why we have taken validb destination validb destination is the one which will help us to load the data into the rdbms so means by using validb i can load the data into oracle or i can load the data into sql 
now here in this scenario will be db destination is the suitable one because my source is a excel source it is not a rdbms one now so let's link the valid excel source and valid db destination so here you have a two arrows one is a gray arrow the other one is a red arrow so gray arrow indicates a success flow red arrow indicates a failure flow so let's click on that so take that arrow that dotted arrow over the valid db destination and leave it it means that now excel source and valid db destination both are connected but valid db destination is at to configure valid db destination you need to configure at okay so let's double click on it how to configure valid db destination let's double click on it so once you double click on it you will be getting so this window if you already have a connection you can directly see here otherwise click on cancel it and click on new so every time we will be creating the new connections like this only now click on new so again you need to click on new here here this is a place where you need to provide a server name in my scenario my server name is dot slash sql 2012 and my database name is sample so if your database name is something customer or products you need to provide the database name so to verify is the connection string is correct or not there is a test connection so once you click on test connection so you will get a message test connection succeeded if there is any error you will see error message here let's click on ok it means that so connection has been established correctly so there is no issue in the connection establishment so once you are done with that let's click on ok so let's click on ok so now till now we have selected database name and server provided a server name only now you need to provide a table name where do you want to load in which table do you want to load this excel data so that you need to select it so once you click on this drop down you will get the list of tables which are available in my sample database that's a very good feature in ssis so you don't need to write so it's a drop down facility there's a selection facility where you can select the table where you want to load into that let's click on the drop down so there you need to select the required table name my table name is employee my table name is employee so once you select the employee there is a message warning message map the columns on the mappings page so you need to go to explicitly go to the mappings page so if the column names are different in between source and destination then you need to map manually if both are same you don't need to map so it automatically maps if you see this my input columns and output columns both are the same name both are having the same names it means that i don't need to map manually it automatically mapped id name location and gender it's already mapped if you see here so if you have here it is id if it is employee id in one place is id the other place is employee id then that time i need to map manually otherwise if both the names are same then you don't need to map manually so once the map is done let's click on ok it means that mapping is done so while configuring like while loading from excel to this uh, uh, destinations while loading from excel to the oily db or any other destinations you might see some warnings because of a uh, data type conversions so let me read out the warning message if you see truncation may occur due to inserting data from data column gender gender with a length of 255 because so this is like a means it, it just my ssis editor or window it is thinking there might be chance of truncating truncate happen on the gender column but it don't happen till 255 characters but my gender column mostly it will be six letters so i don't need to worry so i can ignore that warning and let i can go with my run so once you are done with this uh, development let's run that package so so if you see this my package got succeeded so with you can see the tick marks if there are by any chance if the package fails you will get a cross symbol here and here okay so that time you you need to check why it got failed now so let's stop this if you see the three rows has been moved from excel to the validb destination let's stop this and go to this x uh, sql server so there let's run the select query on the top of the sql server and you can see what is the data now if you compare the data between excel and the sql server both are the same so this is how we load a data from excel file to the sql server that's it thank you for watching please provide your valuable comments in the comments section thank you